My brothers and sisters, today across the world, Christians are celebrating Palm Sunday, which is usually the Sunday prior to Easter. It's also this Sunday before Good Friday, and we come back together on Friday for our grand celebration on Good Friday. Palm Sunday is commemoration of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And we can find this event recorded in Matthew chapter 21, where I'm going to invite you to turn your Bibles. Matthew chapter 21. According to verse 8 of that text, a very great multitude spread their clothes and on the road, others cut down branches from trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Can we just say Hosanna this morning? Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. There's a song that says, Lord, we lift up your name with our hearts filled with praise. Can we just take that one time, praise team? Help me to sing that one time. Lord, we lift up your name with our hearts filled with praise. We exalt thee, O Lord, our God. Hosanna in the highest. Let us just sing it one time. I feel we could just sing it one time. Hosanna. Come on, everybody, sing it out. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. 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 with me a little bit on verses 12 to 17 of the text. I doubt I'm going to be using all of those verses, but that's where the sermon is going to be coming from, mainly verses 12 to 17. Please find it, Matthew 21, verses 12 to 17. Please find it in the meanwhile. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then, he bind, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. 
But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. The context of this passage was the Passover. And this resulted from probably two million or so people were in Jerusalem at that time. Now, this was perhaps the first time in his ministry that you are hearing Jesus actually planning and promoting a public demonstration of who he was. This was no doubt the fulfillment of what some scholars feel in is Zechariah 9, verse 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, daughters, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king come to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. This prophecy could apply only to Jesus, for he is the only one with the credentials to prove that he was truly Israel's king. We usually do not associate the lowly donkey with kingship. I mean, I doubt you would see King Charles riding on a donkey in London. But according to Bible scholars, this was the royal animal of Jewish monarchs. So one can deduce from that that the people understood when they saw Jesus riding on a donkey that he was riding into Jerusalem as a, is, as a king of the Jews. However, it was not, lo not long after this that Jesus entered the temple and what we see ensued from that was what some people call the cleansing of the temple. Jesus had opened his ministry with a similar situation in John 2 verses 13 to 25 thereabout. We saw where he had that same encounter. Now, there we are again, three years later, the temple obviously was defiled again by the religious business of the leaders. They had turned the courts of the Gentiles into a place where foreign Jews could exchange money and purchase sacrifices. And what had begun as a service and a convenience to the visitors or for the visitors from other lands soon turned into an, a lucrative business. The dealers charge exorbitant prices and no one could compete with them or oppose them. Historians tell us that Annas, the former high priest, was the manager of this enterprise assisted by his sons. You can see with me, ladies and gentlemen, the level of corruption that was existing among the Jewish people at that time. The purpose of the court of the Gentiles in the temple was to give the outcasts an opportunity to enter the temple and learn from Israel about the true God. But the presence of this religious market, as it's been called, turned many sensitive Gentiles away, away from the witness of Israel. The court of the Gentiles was used, as somebody described it, for mercenary business, not missionary business. A play on word right there. So what does God want in his house? God wants prayer. Everybody say prayer. God wants prayer among his people. And we can find reference to that many places, but you can look at Second, 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. For true prayer is an evidence of God's dependence, of our dependence on God, that, and our faith in his word. When we pray in God's house, we are exhibiting a dependence on God. 
He also wants people to be helped in his house. We read earlier the story of, I think it was the Good Samaritan, and we saw how that man who was not even among the religious elite had the presence of mind, the humanity, to help somebody who was in need. The needy should feel welcome and should find the kind of help they need when they come into God's house. There should be power in God's house. The power of God working to change people's lives. These are evidences that should be in God's house that God is working among his people. His house should also be filled with praise and adoration to the God who we come to worship and serve. Why don't you take a second or two and give God some praise and adoration in his house? Some of you don't even want to praise him in his house, but can we take just two seconds to just acknowledge that we are acknowledging that God, you are in our midst. Go ahead and give him a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. It is clear that these things were now missing from the house of God. I call it the house of God was hijacked by the religious mercenaries and the situation needed to be corrected. And the, the church today has to learn a lesson from this. We have to always remember that this is God's house. Amen, church. We have to always remember that this is God's house. Some of us have been here 40 odd years, some 50 odd years. I hear even 60 odd years and some are below those years. But whatever years that we have been here, it does not give us ownership of the house. It still remains, everybody say, God's house. It's a house of prayer. It's a house of worship. It's a house of celebration. It is a house where God is adored, where God is celebrated, where God's name is elevated. It is God's house. Come on, raise your voice and say, it is God's house. Oh, hallelujah. You see, my brothers and sisters, the moment we forget that it is God's house, we make it our house. And our house cannot do what God's house can do. Our house is not house, a house of prayer. Our house is not where healing happens. It is in God's house that God shows up. And it is in God's house that God does God's work. And that is why I encourage our people, do not stay away from God's house. Do not buy into that false narrative that you can stay at home and worship. Yes, you can stay at home and worship, but there is a place to be in God's house. When God's people come together, when God's people pray together, when God's people worship together, there is power. And that you will not accomplish when you are at home. So come to God's house. Say praise the Lord church. What we know about the tables of the money changers. Now Judah was a subject to the Romans, thus they used the Roman coin. The Jewish law required them to pay a tribute to the service of the sanctuary of half a shekel, according to Exodus 30, 11 to 16 thereabout. This was a Jewish coin and the tribute was required to be paid in that coin. Therefore, it was convenient, and I'm saying this to you because I want for you to connect 
the corrupt practices of the Jewish leader with the needs of the people. I want you to see the connection. Because unless you see the connection, you're not going to understand the indignation that came upon Jesus, why he had to do what he did. So here it was that it was convenient to have a place where the Roman coin might be exchanged for the Jewish half shekel. This was the professed business of these men. Of course, they did not just exchange a coin, but they were now doing it for a profit. And you can imagine with two million people perhaps, and out of that several hundred thousands, want this business, they were making a killing. The church is not a money-making business. Not for the pastor, nor for the members. The church is a place where God's name is worshipped and God is allowed to bless his people. I wish I had somebody to say amen today. Amen, church. Amen, church. So what we know about the seeds of those who sold doves? Similar story. Doves were required to be offered in sacrifice according to Leviticus 14, and we also find it in Luke 2. Yet it was difficult to bring them from distant parts of Judea. You can imagine now, you live far from Jerusalem and you have to carry the dove. It's not convenient. Hence it became a business to keep them and sell them to those who require doves for sacrifice. But there's another part to this story where they would sometimes take the blemished doves because now you can't take the blemished doves into the sacrifice. So they would take the blemished doves from those who had them and sell them a more expensive unblemished doves. But what do you think they turn around and do with the blemished ones? They sell them too. So you can see with me, my brothers and sisters, why when Jesus came to Jerusalem and saw what was happening in the temple, he was irate. He was angry because the temple was now being abused. It was hijacked. It was not serving its purpose and God's name was not exalted in the temple. And so what he did, he turned over their stalls. And one writer said he made a whip and he drove them out of the temple. And he announced to them that my father's house shall be called the house of prayer. And one writer said for all nations. But then he said, but you have made it a den of thieves. And they would know what Jesus was talking about because the language den of thieves was a common language in the community. So they would know what Jesus was talking about. And he drove them out of the temple. But I like verse 14 of the text. Verse 14 of the text according to Matthew tells us this. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And what happened? He talked to me. I like that. What he did? He healed them. What I see in that, Sister Morgan, is that the temple began to function again. The temple began to do what it was required to do again. But what was the difference? Jesus came into the temple. And once Jesus came into the temple, the temple began to function again. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if you're seeing with me, my brothers and sisters, the connection and the importance to have Jesus in the center of our worship. 
to have Jesus in the center of our worship. Somebody must have said, we can go now. We can go now. The wicked have been removed from the temple. The extortioners have been removed from the temple. We can go now because mercy has come to the temple. Healing has come to the temple. Deliverance has come to the temple. Healing has come to the temple. Oh, glory to God. Salvation has come to the temple. Oh, hallelujah to God. Jesus has come to the temple. Raise your hand and say, Jesus, we welcome you in this temple. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to see with me, my brothers and sisters, picture with me a little bit and see those blind people waiting out there. The lame are waiting out there, cannot approach the temple because they do not have the shekel and they do not have the dove and they do not have the money. And they want the healing. They want the deliverance. They want the salvation, but cannot approach the temple. I want you to picture with me that image in your mind of a crowd waiting to come to the temple where they know God should be. But they cannot enter the temple because they don't have what it took. But then one man, one man, one man, where is the church that I'm preaching to? One man. Do you know the name of that man? Do you know the name of that man? Jesus came to the temple. Hallelujah. And when Jesus came to the temple, the lame could come to the temple. The broken could come to the temple. The whole could come to the temple because Jesus was in the temple. Lift your hands and praise him, my brothers and sisters. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Church, it is important that we embrace the presence of Jesus when we come together. I'm happy to see you, Stephen. You're my friend and I love you. I'm happy to see you, Sister Miller. I love you. I am happy to see you, Sister Williams. But I'm happier to see the one who died for me. I'm happier to see the one who has shed his blood for me. His name is Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at some point, at some point, Brother Stephen, I have to know I'm happy to see you, but I have to take my attention off of you now and look unto Jesus. Because Jesus is the one. He is the only one. He is the only one worthy of my worship. Can we raise our hands and our voice and give God a praise? Oh God, we will worship you this morning. Jesus, we give you glory, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The text remind me though of a scene in Revelation. The Laodicean church. John writing to them in Revelation said to them, Jesus is speaking and he's saying, Minister Fuller, behold, let me read it from this translation for you. Look, 
I stand at the door and knock. And every time I read that text, it bothers my heart. Because what kind of church the Leodosians were having and Jesus was not in there. Church, church, answer me, church. It is not automatic that Jesus is with us. Because we say we are gathered for church does not mean he's with us. We have to ensure that our hearts, our minds, our soul, our entire being embraces the presence of Jesus in our midst. Our focus has to be on him. The singing is nice. The music is nice. Chris can play good. Excellent. But it's about focusing on Jesus. Lest we find ourselves, sister Lillian, like the Leodosian church, where he's saying, I am standing at the door and knocking. He said, if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together as friend. It has to be intentional. It is easy for us to be like the Jews. It's the programs, it's the media, it's the sound. It's that not right over there. It is easy to be distracted rather than focusing on Jesus. So I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters, when we come together, we are not, the physical temple is not the same in its context like what Jesus cleansed. But when we bring our temple, for the writer Paul tells us that your bodies, your body is the temple of the Lord. Make sure that Christ is seated on the throne of your hearts. Make sure that you are embracing him as Lord of your life. Make sure that your worship goes to him. Make sure that with all the distractions around you, your worship goes to God. Oh, hallelujah. Make sure that when everything is finished and you're going through that door, you would have sucked up everything, every blessing that God had for you in the service. You would have sucked it up. And you're going out filled because you gave to him your all. Can we just take, stand everybody and take two seconds and just give him praise. Take a few seconds and give him worship. Glory to your name, Jesus. Church, take a few seconds and give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we worship you. Praise your name, O oh God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 
take joy, my King, in what what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. To worship, worship you. somebody in this house this day who would like to surrender to Christ if that is so I'm inviting you to step forward you'd like to surrender to Christ yes coming to church is wonderful but you need to surrender your life to Jesus for he wants to be seated on the throne of your lives the throne of your hearts will you come to him today maybe you need to make a recommitment to him this is a good opportunity for you to do so and I invite you to do so now. One more time. I love you, Lord. One more time and then we're going to pray. Come now, please. If you're coming. Coming. Take joy, my king. Yeah. 
before we pray is there somebody else is there one more person who God is speaking to you today I hear you saying oh pastor I'm not ready I have so many things to do but God is ready for you God is calling you will you respond is there one more person I feel a pull and a push towards just waiting for somebody else is one more person in this house today who would surrender to Jesus is there somebody else this child is coming glory to God thank God for the children who cried Hosanna is there somebody else glory to God hallelujah come brothers come people come this is a time when God is calling his people is there somebody else I'm waiting on somebody else I'm waiting on somebody else don't keep me waiting too long is there somebody else is there somebody else is there somebody else glory to God 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 good to see you Lisa glory to God is there somebody else is there somebody else come now come 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 now come now come now where are the young men come on I, I I see the Lord working on the heart of some young men in this place don't keep me waiting come on men come on men step out step out step out step out step out step out is there is there a young man God is calling is there a young man that God is speaking to come now come now come now I want to I want to bring this thing to a close it's two minutes to go is there somebody else is there somebody else Jesus is calling somebody else the Spirit is calling you I hear you saying pastor can you stop now <clears throat> will I stop when you step forward is God is calling somebody come come step out step out step out Sunday after Sunday you have been resisting but today the Spirit is hijacking you in this place come now I'm going to see a Jafari. Is there somebody else? Is there? I feel like I'm, I'm at a bidding center. Is there somebody else? Glory to God. You said, Pastor, I didn't come here for that. But Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling the young men. Young men, I call upon you because you're strong. Come out of your sinful state. Is there somebody else? Come here, Javon. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? Hallelujah. Is there somebody else? I don't like to do this, but I have to do it because I feel so compelled to do it. Turn to the person who's standing beside you and say, are you a Christian? If the answer to that per from that person is no, say to them, can I invite you to respond to the altar call this morning? Oh, glory to God. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on somebody else. I'm waiting on somebody else. Hallelujah. Is there somebody else? Now I have to count you down. Going once. Going twice. Going thrice. It's gone. Come, Javon. I wanted to pray for these at the altar. Glory to God. Remain in, remain in prayer congregation. Remember, this is God's house. God wants to save and deliver these people at the altar. From their situations, whatever the situations are, God wants to deliver them. And we are here today to partner with God in delivering his people from whatever situation they are into. Javon. Hallelujah. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. And your life will never be the same. Most righteous and eternal God, we thank you for your love that you continue to show towards us. The grace that you continue to extend to us. We thank you for your words, my God, that you have delivered to your people. And we have reached at a point at this service where your people have come to this altar. To this meeting place with human and divine 
Lord Jesus, here are your people at this altar. Some are not even here, God. But Lord Jesus, we place them before you. It is your words that have declared that all souls are mine, says the Lord. And this morning we declare that these souls that are at this altar, that they belong to you, almighty God. We silence the voice of Satan that has been whispering in their ears for far too long. We pray even now, God, for the spirit of conviction to rest upon these at the altar that you will convict hearts, that you will convict souls, uh, that you will touch minds, mighty God, that you will touch hearts, uh, even now, almighty God. Uh, we pray, mighty God, for the war that is in the minds of your people at this very altar. Some of them, my God, are in the valley of indecision. Uh, some of them, oh God, are at a place uh, where they don't know where to turn. Uh, but almighty God, we pray at this altar, Oh God, for them, we pray uh, for a sound mind. Uh, we pray for the peace of God uh, to rest upon their minds even now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, Almighty God, I pray uh, that you will loose your people, that you will loose them from sin, uh, that you will loose them from carnality. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, oh God, we stand on your words uh, that have declared in Matthew. Uh, that you have given us the keys to the kingdom. So God, today we take the key as a church and we unlock the doors, oh God, over these lives at this altar. We pull them out of sin right now. We pull them out of the hand and the grip of Satan. And we pray, Almighty God, that there will be a loosing in the name of Jesus. You call Lazarus out of the tomb. You say, loose him huh, and let him go. Huh. We call these persons huh, at this altar huh, out of the tomb of sin. Huh. Oh, God Almighty, huh. we call them out of the dark dungeon, huh, that place that the enemy huh, has hold them into huh, for many years. Huh. We stand as a church this morning huh, and we pull them out huh, from, the, oh God, the spirit of death huh, and the spirit of carnality. Huh, and we pray Lord uh, that you will loose them uh, from every addiction uh, oh, we pull them out now uh, oh God uh, from every addiction uh, we pull them out God uh, and we untie them uh, from every hurt uh, uh, from fear uh, from anxiety uh, oh in the name of Jesus uh, we take authority this morning uh, and we pray over this altar huh, that the spirit of the living God huh, will rest upon the hearts huh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Save your people this morning. Save them this morning. Save them this morning. Those that are online, God. Those that are in the congregation. Oh, God. I pray that you will rescue them. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for hearing us, God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for listening. And we thank you for the souls, my God, that are coming into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Save those in this community even now. We pull some men out, mighty God, even now. We pull them into the body of Christ even now. In the various communities surrounding us. We pull young people even now. And we declare in the name of Jesus that salvation has come. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.